Trigonometric functions are some of the most fundamental functions in mathematics and begin with a simple right angled triangle. Now what they do is relate the sides of the triangle to an angle within the triangle other than the right angle. And this gives rise to the famous functions sine, cosine and tangent. Now another way to think about them is to let the hypotenuse be equal to 1. Then sine x becomes the length of the opposite side and cosine x becomes the length of the adjacent side. Let's now try to plot the values of the length of the adjacent side and the length of the opposite side as the angle x changes. And an important note is that since the hypotenuse is equal to 1, then as we change the value of the angle, we will sketch out a unit circle. So let's now plot the values of the lengths of the two sides and what we get are our famous sine and cosine graphs. Let's focus on y equals sine x for the moment and this yellow line here is the gradient at the yellow point. Let's now plot the values of the gradient of sine x and what we see is that the function we have drawn is dy dx and this function is our original cosine function. So quite beautifully the derivative of sine x is cosine of x. Let's now take our cosine function and plot the values of the gradient like we did before. And what we see is that we end up with the sine function but reflected in the y-axis. Therefore, dy dx is equal to minus sine x. So we have the beautiful relationship that the derivative of sine x is cosine x and the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. But you're probably thinking, what about tan? Well, we have that tan x is equal to opposite divided by adjacent, which can be written as O over H divided by A over H as the H would just cancel. And this is just sine x over cosine x. So if we take our values of the sine function and divide it by our values of the cosine function, we get the famous graph of the function y equals tan x. And these dashed lines here are our asymptotes. Now let's now plot the values of the gradient like we did before. And we see we end up with a seemingly unfamiliar graph. But after some testing, we see that this is a graph of 1 over cosine squared of x, which is more commonly written as secant squared of x. So the derivative of tan x is secant squared of x, but how do we properly know this? How do we know that the derivatives that we have drawn are actually cosine x minus sine x and secant squared x and not just graphs that look very similar to those graphs. So what we need to do is we need to prove it. And to do this, let's take the definition of the derivative, which is dy dx is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h, where y is equal to f of x. Now let's take f of x equal to sine x. Then dy dx is equal to the limit as h tends to zero of sine of x plus h minus sine of x all over h. Now let's use the trigonometric angle rule, which states that sine of x plus h is equal to sine x cos h plus sine h cos x. This gives that dy dx is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of sine x cos h plus sine h cos x minus sine x all divided by h. Now for small values of h we can use the approximation that sine of h is approximately h and cosine of h is approximately 1. And you can check this for yourself. You can use a calculator, take a small value and take the sine of that value and you'll see that it's almost exactly the same as the value itself. And take the cosine of another small value and you'll see that it's almost 1. So we get that dy dx is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of x times 1 plus h cosine x minus sine x all over h. Now multiplying something by 1 just gives itself and we see that sine x cancels with minus sine x. This gives the limit as h tends to 0 of h cosine x over h. Now we see that the h cancels and we're left with the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine of x. And since there aren't any h's anymore, we can remove the limit operator. 
which just gives us cosine of x. So dy dx is equal to cosine of x when y is equal to sine of x. Now let's take y equal to cosine of x. Then we have that dy dx is equal to the limit as h tends to zero of cosine of x plus h minus cosine of x all over h. Now let's use the trigonometric angle sum rule which states that cosine of x plus h is equal to cos x cos h minus sine x sine h. This gives dy dx is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of cos x cos h minus sine x sine h minus cos x all divided by h. And again, for small values of h, we can use the approximation that sine of h is approximately h and cosine of h is approximately one. Then dy dx is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of cosine of x times one minus sine of x times h minus cosine of x all divided by h. Now we can get rid of the multiplied by one and we see that cosine of x cancels in the numerator. This gives the limit as h approaches zero of minus sine x times h divided by h. And as we see, h cancels and we get the limit as h approaches zero of minus sine x. And again, since there aren't any h's, we can remove the limit operator as it does nothing and we get minus sine x. Therefore, when y is equal to cosine of x, then dy dx is equal to minus sine of x. Now for tangent of x, the best way to differentiate it is to use something known as the product rule, which is covered in a separate video. But if you're still adamant in doing it via first principles, then I'll leave a proof of that in the description below. Now, if the use of approximations doesn't convince you, then I have a full concrete proof also in the description below. So if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like on it and hit that subscribe button if you want to learn, explore, and master more mathematics. And head over to mathesy.com where you can find all my notes, my videos, and if you want to support the channel. Hope you guys have a good day, and I'll see you all next time.